Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Andor Authority. Now you're probably used to me wearing these glasses, but today I'm gonna to be telling you about these glasses. One of the most famous, or should I say infamous, augmented reality products of recent times was of course Google Glass. However, Google aren't the only company investing in AR. Epson, a company who you may know better for its printers and scanners, also make AR products, including the BT200 smart glasses. And today we're going to be looking at these smart glasses and see what they're capable of. The BT200s are a full set of smart glasses with tiny projectors for both the left and the right eyes. However, unlike a VR headset, the rest of the viewing area is transparent. This means that you can walk around and perform tasks aided by the glasses. Coming out of the side is a cable which connects to a control unit. This box, which is about the size of a smartphone, provides all the computing power as well as a touchpad for controlling the glasses and connectivity like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Halfway along the cable is a small clip and a headphone socket. The control unit is like a small tablet, but the display has been removed and replaced with the projectors in the glasses. Inside the box is a Texas Instruments OMAP 4460 dual-core Cortex-A9 based processor running at 1.2 GHz. There's also 1 GB of RAM and 8 GB of internal storage. If you need more space then you can use a micro SD card to add up to an extra 32 GB. The glasses weigh around 88 grams, which is much heavier than a normal pair of glasses. However, the weight isn't prohibitive. You can wear them comfortably for about 2 hours. Only then do they start to feel like a burden. The optics are first class. The little projectors display an image which appears to be about 80 inches at 5 meters distance. The way the optics have been designed give the impression that you are looking at a large screen or monitor a few meters in front of you. Because of this perceived distance and the quality of the Epson projectors, my eyes never got tired from looking at the displays. No headaches, no neck aches, no nothing. It was a pleasure. The unit runs Android 4.04, which means you can run any API 15 Android app, including games, productivity apps, and multimedia apps. It's a fairly stock version of Android. That means it will be able to run unmodified Android apps directly, just as you would on a smartphone or tablet. The trackpad on the surface of the control unit is used to control a cursor, much like a mouse. You move it around with your finger on the pad and then tap for a click. The screen that is projected by the glass is in landscape mode, but the trackpad is used in portrait mode. This is okay and doesn't really cause any problems, except that the width of the trackpad is narrow, as you have to use the left-right distance of the upright pad area rather than using its longest side. The BT200 doesn't come with Google Play support, so any normal apps you want to download either need to be sideloaded or installed via a third-party app store. For my testing, I installed Amazon's App Store and I was able to find and install many popular apps without any trouble. For app developers, there is also the Moverio SDK, which provides a library that allows Android apps to control the BT200's display, audio and sensors. For Moverio specific apps, Epson has its own ecosystem and an app store called Moverio App Market. It would be nice if the Android version was higher, not because there is any functionality missing, but because it might give some access to some more interesting content like Google Cardboard or other VR projects that are being built on later versions of the OS. The old adage goes that hardware is useless without software, and that also applies to the BT200 smart glasses. Thankfully, there's quite a bit of interesting app development going on for these glasses. Having used the glasses for quite a while now, I can safely say that they work very well with just about any Android app or game. I downloaded the Dolphin web browser and Angry Birds and both worked without any problems. The only minor exception was that the intro for the Dolphin browser is in portrait mode. However, once you have dealt with it, it switches back to landscape. The only apps that don't work are those that must be used in portrait mode. For example, I downloaded Temporal Run and as a portrait game, it just isn't possible to play it. Browsing the web is an interesting experience. If you are loading pages with lots of text, then smart glasses really aren't the best medium. However, if you are looking at media-rich pages, like photo galleries, then smart glasses work very well. Typing in URLs and search terms can be tedious, as you have to use the on-screen keyboard, which means you have to move the cursor to the desired letter, then tap, then move to the next letter, tap again, and so on. 
Since there are no Google services, there is no YouTube app. However, YouTube work as expected from within the Dolphin browser. Watching a movie or browsing your photo collection can be quite fun on the BT200s and the device supports apps like Netflix. However, you can do all that on other VR headsets. The real power can be found in AR. Epson kindly preloaded my review unit with some example AR apps, which demonstrate what is possible. The glasses include a built-in VGA camera. You can take photos and record video using the standard Android open source camera app. As well as being able to take low resolution photos and record video, the camera is also used by apps to see what the wearer is seeing. With pattern recognition and other fancy technologies, apps are able to add layers of new information on top of what the user is actually seeing. The classic use case is with trackers. Printed material, usually a printed pattern or code, is recognised by the app and used to display a 3D model or some other image. One of the more ambitious demo AR apps is probably Visualising the Future by CN Technology. It is meant to be used with the Wellstar Atrium Model 4000 single collection chest drainage system. It displays AR instructions directly above the physical device. The idea is that it provides help and training for users of these medical devices and shows the necessary steps for successful operation. You can download the front facing target which is stuck on the front of these devices and experience the AR part without actually owning one of the drainage systems. Since I don't know much about chest drainage systems, I was a little lost while I was using the app, but it certainly did show me where to connect the hoses, all in glorious AR. One fun game I have for the BT200s is AR Man. It's basically a Pac-Man game in 3D where you play the role of the Pac-Man. You are in a maze which you navigate by actually walking about and using your head to see what's around you. There are even ghosts. This is clever because the game uses the sensors in the glasses to detect forward movement. As a result, you don't need to control your position in the game via the touchpad, you just walk forward. Obviously, you need a big open area to play this, but because you can see through the glasses, you aren't walking around blind like you would be with other VR headsets. The same author also wrote Maelstrom, a VR walking app that allows you to look around a virtual world while also enabling you to move around in virtual space by actually walking around in real space. If there is an app which is close to being a killer app for the Moverio glasses, it is the DJI Vision app for use with the DJI Phantom drones. Some of the DJI drones have a camera on them which allows you to see a live view from the drone. DJI call this first person view flying. The app allows full remote camera control and incorporates things like live telemetry readings. Since you can see through the Moverio glasses, then you can watch your drone while flying it, but at the same time receive telemetry and a first person view from the drone. In terms of non-consumer apps, Epson is seeing lots of interest from businesses. For example, Lockheed is using the BT200 smart glasses to instruct engineers on how exactly to build and repair F-35 fighter jets. According to an interesting article by Popular Mechanics, when a glasses wearing engineer is installing a brake component on the landing gear, they look at the wheel and the glasses show renderings of every bolt and cable with the part numbers and ordered instructions showing where the parts fit. Another area which is interesting is the whole area of remote support. You see what I see. Imagine a situation where someone needs some remote technical support. Normal televote support only goes so far. If you have used a service like TeamViewer to help someone do something on their PC, you can now imagine a system where you see what the other person is seeing through their BT200 smart glasses. But more than that, you can interact with their display by adding arrows, circles and text so that you can guide them in their repair. It's quite an interesting concept and two of the leading companies are Scope AR and Apex Labs. The list of potential uses for these glasses is in fact very long. Another favourite of mine is the use of augmented reality by pilots flying planes. A company called Aeroglass has an app for the BT200s which help pilots to properly visualise terrain, navigation, traffic, instruments, weather and airspace information. Overall, I'm very impressed with the potential of these smart glasses. This is very much a product in the developer edition phase. It isn't ready for consumer mainstream. However, if you or your company are looking for AR solutions, then the Moverium might just be the platform you're looking for. 
As with so many areas of innovation, the key to success will be finding a killer application. At the moment, the BT200s are interesting, even inspiring, but not yet essential, unless you own a drone, that is. However, as this tech develops, we will certainly see lots of new ideas and interesting ways of using AR. Epson's original BT100 smart glasses were released in early 2012 and weighed 220 grams. Two and a bit years later, Epson released the BT200 smart glasses, now weighing just 88 grams. If Epson maintains the same release cycle, then we can expect to see the BT300 smart glasses sometime in late 2016 or maybe early 2017. If the company manages to cut down the weight even further, add a 2 or 5 megapixel camera and use a newer version of Android, then what is currently a device for businesses, developers and drone enthusiasts could become a must-have consumer product. In the meantime, if you own a DJI drone, then go out and get yourself a pair of BT200 smart glasses. Similarly, if you want to develop VR and AR apps, then you should seriously look at this platform. And there you have it, the Epson Moverio BT200 smart glasses. They're currently available from Amazon for $699. Please do check out the AndroAuthority.com website and find the written companion to this article, where you'll also find some links to some of the technology I was talking about today. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel and please use the comments below to tell me what you think about these smart glasses and what you think about AR and VR in general. And as for me, I'm going to see you in my next video.